Okay, it's exactly 8.45, so we'll, we'll begin. I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Jed Anderson. He's the CEO for Enviro AI. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name again is Jed Anderson. I'm the CEO of Enviro AI. Uh, we are an environmental artificial intelligence company. During this presentation, I'd like to show you how we're using artificial intelligence to help refining chem and chemical companies improve their special conditions in their air permits. Before I do that, though, I need to start out with why we are doing this. This is the story of how we arrived at this solution. We question everything. It began 25 years ago for me when I was a baby attorney at a law firm, and we asked a question, and that question was, why is this system so complicated? I was given a code of federal regulations and told to go thumb through it, and that was the question that just gets me: why is this system so complicated? Quality regulatory system in the environmental system is the most complicated system in human history. So the second most complicated system is the U.S. tax code. But the environmental <laughs> system is twice as complicated. Billions of pages of statutes, millions of pages of rules and guidance documents. Why does it need to be this complicated? The fact is it doesn't. It just doesn't need to be this complicated. That's the uh, answer that was qu quickly arrived at, but getting to that solution took me many, many more years of struggles. And so uh, I'd like to, before I tell you a little bit about how that solution is and how we got to that solution, uh, show you a little bit about my personal history, a little bit um, getting to this solution. So I started out with the National Park Service uh, when I graduated college, a huge passion for the outdoors and simplicity of, of nature. Um, I went to environmental law firms and started a legal career. Uh, ended up teaching law school at the U of H where I uh, taught the Clean Air Act. And then uh, I began to lobby Congress. And the reason was the complexity of the system kept on gnawing at me. I said, there must be a simple way to do this. Um, so I started to reform the Clean Air Act. I even sat down one day and rewrote the Clean Air Act. Um, it, it only uh, took me 50 pages. So I took a thousand page document and made it 50 pages. Uh, Congress though was not interested in my 50 page Clean Air Act. And uh, so I figured out uh, after 10 years of doing that and in fact, writing a book about the experience uh, uh, is on Amazon, I decided that's not gonna work. I need to figure out a new approach to simplifying uh, the Clean Air Act. And that's when we arrived at this. So about four years ago, two things happened. Uh, one was I was introduced to artificial intelligence the second was that I was working for a major refining company, and that company had asked me to go in and look for better special conditions in their air permits. The only way I knew how to do that was to go on the TCQ's database, which was slow, clunky, and it was frustrating. Just downloading each PDF document, I'll show you, and reading through that PDF document. And yes, I was making $400 an hour, but I was bored. And so I started to ask my question, this question, can it be made more simple? Um, and I knew it could. Uh, so I took a class through Stanford University in natural language processing, learned how to scrape the data. And then applying this tool, I took a project that was taking me 100 hours, and I was able to do it in 10. So I took a project that was costing a client you know, uh, $40,000, and I was able to do it now in a, for $1,000. That much quicker and a better work product using artificial intelligence. So I'm going to show you that system and how it works. And that really was the epiphany for me, that moment in time that I realized that technology and innovation really was going to be the answer to simplicity and uh, bringing the environmental line system into the future. So really that driver has to be this innovation, technology, and the pursuit of free enterprise that really is going to lead us toward a simpler environmental compliance system in the future. Where's that led us at Enviro AI? This is our platform. It's called Tundra. It works just like any search engine. So you can pop in here and look for Astros tickets. Uh, Google, right? Any Astros fans? Maybe Astros. Uh, no, no, no. All right, Astros fans. So you can look for Google, uh, anything you want. It works just like Google or Bing. But what we have, in addition to Google, is that suddenly it goes like this. The whole internet shrinks. They focus just on environmental. So all the garbage, right, and riffraff that you don't want to look at as environmental people who are doing environmental work shrinks. 
and we expanded that at the same time by taking a whole lot of data that Google doesn't have access to. We'll show you what we do with it. So we have a highly curated data set that includes millions of agency regulatory documents from across the country. In near real time, we pull these documents every hour. Essentially, we scrape these data documents and then apply natural language processing um, and you'll see our chat function uh, to this data. And then we augment it. So not only is it data that we're getting from the Internet, but we submit public information act requests. To the agency. And so we get hundreds of thousands of additional documents that way. So we pay for them and then they load them up onto an FTP site and we OCR it and then we start applying our natural language processing. So get this, but our system has more data in it than TCQ system. Isn't that interesting? So the public system, ours has, ours has more data because of that. And again, what we do that the, the state agencies don't, right, is apply advanced natural language processing and chatbots to be able to get to that data and intelligence that those public data systems can't. Uh, we also use uh, and map geocode uh, information. We'll show you how to do that. And the big next move really is to start adding functionality so that you can perform work functions such as draft a permit form or uh, inspect this facility form. And so we're beginning to automate that functionality into this tool and almost creating a environmental personal assistant, if you will, uh, from this tool. And you'll start to see, I think, that, that vision as we're, as we're pursuing this. So now when you get into permit conditions, everyone realizes what this is. Uh, probably everyone in this room, special conditions and air permits. Uh, so I just took a, a random one, and this is one talking about uh, scrubber flow. As you, most of you probably know, if you have a, a real high scrubber flow rate, you're probably going to have some more issues with operational issues. Uh, with trying to meet that rate and of course if you violate it you're in violation and have issues so having a lower uh, scrubber rate finding the other companies out there that might have a lower rate and have that operational flexibility and not have that regulatory burden and potential uh, uh, legal uh, issue is it an advantage uh, so what i do for my clients is i take the chat tool and i'll show you specifically how i do this as i go through the entire permit and I make prompts or I make questions out of each facet of this. And I get super creative with questions. Um, all of you like probably have asked 20 questions with your kids. It's kind of the same thing with these chat tools and with these search functions. There's different ways that you ask questions, quotations, not quotation marks, long phrases. I'll take a whole snippet of a special condition that I like and I'll throw it in there. Right to say, hey, find me something like this, right? And quotation marks are not quotation marks. And it's just fascinating how these tools now are beginning to identify, oh, that's a similar permit condition to this. Let me show you that. Um, and so it becomes really a fun thing to do. Um, it, 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 but but the main thing, right, is not fun, it's value. How much value can I create for my company? How much can I reduce regulatory burden? How much can I reduce risk to the company? Uh, and improve environmental performance. So I just wanted to list out a, a few of the questions that, that I've created um, and just give you an idea. Uh, so what's the lowest scrubber circulation rate? What's the most recent TCQ requirement permit condition on the combustion zone net heating value? Uh, what are the potential potential AMOX <clears throat> alternatives? I want to know any time any facility gets an exception. I want to know that uh, so that I can get that exception or if anyone gets an AMOX. Or if anyone gets out of a rule, has an inapplicability determination, or get a permit shield, I want to know. And this, with this tool, I know within an hour. I know within an hour of any of anyone in this room essentially getting a permit condition that might be helpful for uh, my customers. So all of you in this room, right? If you want that advantage, if you want that competitive advantage, that that's what this tool offers. Uh, just to give you a couple more examples, cooling water monitoring, condi conductivity. Um, is there any alternative to performing uh, daily AVO inspections? So those type of questions that, again, you go through every time that you need to amend your permit or you need a new permit, this exercise uh, will just result in all kinds of opportunities. And at the end, we'll take some, some questions. If you don't mind, just holding it to the end, okay, please. And then, uh, yeah, we'll show you this. If you don't have this tool, this is what I was doing. Hours, I see everyone smiling because we've all done it, right? 
hours and hours. I did this at $400 an hour for some people in this room. And downloading the PDF, I, I search and I don't see the answer. I only see like 400, 584 results and I don't see any answers. I don't know if the best document is this or if it's number 570. So the only way I can do that and try and find the answer with this tool is to download each PDF. So that's that's weeks, weeks worth of work if I was to try and find the answer with this. Instead, right, if I'm using Tundra, this is what pops up. I'm searching for net heating value and trying to find a better special condition. Automatically, I get snippets so I can see very clearly. This says at the top, that's the relevant score, and that's the AI evaluating it, saying it's 100%. So the better my search is and so forth, then I might have to play with my search. That AI is going to get much better at identifying this is the permit condition that you need. And then what I do is I hit PDF, I hit print, and then I go to the agency with it and say, hey, guess what? You just gave my competitor to special condition two weeks ago. I want the same one. Pretty effective. I'm going to give you one example. Look for new alternative means of compliance. And I'll walk you through. So at the top, you're seeing all states. I wanted the ability to pull in every state, right? So if I was talking to TCQ, I could say, hey, Louisiana is allowing this, right, for a scrubber. Seems to be working. They're saying that it's relevant and applicable to the federal law. I want to use this as well. Uh, so that's all states. You can see TCQ, LDQ, and we have about 13 different states now that we're pulling uh, real-time data with and then supplementing with Public Information Act requests. Um, over to the right, again, the internet is a treasure trove of data, a great environmental data. The problem is you can't get to it. And so what we've done is essentially uh, culled that back so that you can just see environmental data. So if you search tank on the internet, you're going to see like the Abrams tank or the actor apparently tank. But if you uh, search tank on our system, you're probably going to see an underground or above ground storage tank. And uh, I don't know if you knew this, but 75% of people don't go to the second page of search results. Isn't that interesting? Us as human beings. So if you don't bring data to people in that first page or two, they're not going to see it. So that's our whole thing is bringing that value, that high level intelligence to you um, so that you can take advantage of it in your work. Uh, we also geocode this tool. So you can see I'm here at the Exxon Chemical Baytown plant and I can go ahead and zoom in on a particular piece of equipment and look at the permit conditions related to this. So here I'm zooming in on a flare. Uh, this flare number, I think 12, flare stack 12. And here I'm going right in, I can click on, and then I can pull up different uh, emissions and other details about that and look at that special conditions, look at what their permitted values are, what their actual emissions are. And then with the click of this button here, I go to all the agency documents. So we wanted the ability to go to, hey, let's look at the special conditions just related to that particular emission unit. So with the click of a button, we can get there. This has been a game changer. It was taking me, I said, hours to do my work right or with the TCQ system. Then I we made it much simpler with this uh, natural language processing tool. The chat world is is bringing it to a whole nother gear in terms of trying to find data. Uh, we're taking uh, uh, chat GPT 3.0 and now we're moving to chat GPT uh, trained as essentially our base model. And then we'll move to uh, GPT 4.0, which we're starting to transition to now. But we have the first environmental compliance chat path by the world. So we take the power essentially of those models, but we train it on millions of additional environmental documents, and then we train it just to be an environmental chatbot. So when you search, for example, scrubber rate, I have no idea what the minimum scrubber rate is. I could guess all day long and not get that right. But if I asked on your chat, what's the lowest scrubber rate? It goes straight to the answer. 0.50. Is that wild? I could have never guessed 0 0.50. Now, do I know that's right? No, I still don't believe these chatbots yet. I don't, right? I've got to see the actual proof of it. And so what we've done is we've created two ways to verify that truth. One is that we pull up the internet related to that same search. So you can look for internet um, type of uh, references. And then here again are those base documents. 
So you can see what Kasky is doing here is that she's taking this snippet at 0.5 and putting it back into that search result. And there she's finding the answer. This is the document 0 0.50. Hit the document and suddenly you found it. Again, if you try to do that without the chat tool and without this NLP, you're just never going to find it. It's a needle in the haystack. It's absolutely impossible to, to find it on TCT's website. So that's the value that uh, our customers are seeing um, in this. Um, we've got a few of our customers in our room, uh, and I was hoping that we could call on you to just talk a little bit about how you're using the tool. Yeah, Ro Sharma, Line Delta Cell, Line Delta Chemical. Um, I know some of you here, familiar faces, others maybe I've not met before. Uh, I'm what you call a guinea pig. So when um, Jed came to uh, came to me and said, hey, we're developing this tool, how'd you like to try it? Said, sure. And so we became guinea pigs and tried it. Uh, and we've gone from guinea pigs to paid members because it didn't take long to figure out how um, powerful this tool is to be able to go to this agency, uh, the TCQ, and having done the research in a matter of 30 minutes uh, for of special conditions, of language, of MERT limits, you know, any of that stuff, and know uh, ahead of time what everybody else has and what you're asking for, and to be able to go to the agency and say, this is what I want, and uh, here's all the people that have it. They just look at you, and they got no choice. They got to give it to you. Um, it just, it just, it becomes a competitive advantage. You use that term, and it's true. And whether it's a new permit or permit amendment, we've been able to use this. Um, you know, and first in management usually asks us, well, how much does it cost? That's kind of, you know, expensive and all of that. It didn't take long. It did not take long. I mean, how long are you going to have that permit? How long are you going to have the monitoring requirements and the permit that you just got that other people don't have, or you don't have that other people have, whichever the way that that would be? Uh, how much money did that save you? Right for the life of the permit, it it becomes a pretty pretty quick uh, analysis of how powerful this tool can be, and we've used it to that effect. There might be one other user. It's Clinton. I'm not sure. Oh, it's Clinton. Yeah, thank you. Oh, um, so I, I guess I don't use it as much as maybe some of the other permit folks do and stuff like that, but I do use it um, from time to time for. Um, confidence uh, with a question and like you said I mean you you said it better than I can say it but you know when, when I do a search on on Tundra uh, it brings me right to the point and instead of just spinning my wheels for hours like searching through Google and everything else so um, yeah it's very very uh, it's very good for me to feel confident about answering a question that someone might have and knowing that um, I didn't spend days and you know weeks like pouring over this one question or whatever and said get right to the point and move on with life. So that's what I like about it. That combustion zone net heating value is an example that we used. We had a consent decree and you're supposed to roll in your, your consent decree requirements into your state permit. So I went in, in there and, and found you know other language other people had used basically wrote out my my permit before I approached TCQ and said, you know, other people have done this. They've rolled in the consent decree requirements. Here's what they asked for. Here's what they got. I'd like the same place. Uh, very, you know, very, very, very simple to do that. So to Rose, right, you type, type in combustion zone net heating value, and the most relevant that the AI is saying to check out is, uh, is uh, yours, Jim, right? Is, uh, go check out Exxon Mobil's. Yeah, the other cool thing about this is on the left side there, uh, not only do you have the percentage confidence, if you will, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm probably not going to go look at a document that's 50, 60, 70 percent confident level on the set. I will look at the ones that are at the top, 90 to 100, because those uh, the tools telling me are the most relevant to my question. Uh, and then, I, of course, I could PDF it and look at the all the transactions that the agency has loaded, mm -hmm. all the back and forth, all the emails, the department, everything is there on that in that PDF that the uh, agency has uploaded. Uh, it is available by that one click on the PDF. Uh, and then the other thing I like about this is uh, it'll pull up a maybe a cement plant that has uh, an answer to the question that you asked. Well, I'm not interested in the cement plant. I, I want to know in my sector, my petrochemical sector. So I'll just go down the left side there and I'll just look for names. 
and I'll say, oh, that's relevant to me. That's relevant to me. Cement plant, man, I'm going to look at that. And so it's just very quickly, you can do whatever sector you want, um, go down and, and, and pick it, whether it's refinery or petrochem or whatever that is. Do, do you use it more as a corporate tool or as individual, like individual uh, environmental folk? Very good question. We started off when we were guinea pigs as a corporate tool, and then it became um, such a such a powerful tool and an advantage. We opened it up. We said the folks at the plant who do day to day permitting and are talking to TCQ on a day to day basis, they need to be armed with this tool, right? And not have to make a a call or two calls or three calls to get that answer. And so it is now gone to the plants, and the plants have this at their fingertips. Hmm. And so when they're when they're talking with their a uh, permit writer, uh, whatever the issue is on a special condition, they got this tool right. Uh, hang on just one second. <laughs> and they're right there. They're, so it's available to to, to our uh, site environmental folks. It, it actually, you're going to have an advantage, right? TCP doesn't have this internal capability. They don't have chatbots and, and, uh, and the uh, advanced national language processing. So you actually have a, a significant advantage on that. I was, I was going to say I'm a fairly recent adopter and I've been kind of playing around with it. And you know, obviously, not only do you get really intuitive results and it's easy to find stuff that's got the chat uh, and all those capabilities, but I found that uh, however you, you've got your search engine tweaked, you can find a lot more stuff using your, your program than if you went to the TCQ website and tried to use the TCQ central records or the TCQ sort of embedded Google search. I can find stuff more easily and get actually get more returns using yours than I than I can on TCQ website than if I do if I just go to the TCQ website and spend endless hours searching for things. So they come back quickly, they're more comprehensive, and I'm able to find them in a more usable fashion. So I've only used it for a short period of time, but and I use it for legal research primarily, but uh, I, I, I'm pretty impressed with it. The other thing I'm pushing Jed about is a users group, and we're going to do that. We're going to form a users group for those that are members and paying members. And uh, we know, we'll get together and we'll talk about what the next steps are, and what we would like to see that maybe perhaps would be, uh, you know, like to see in the tool. And we'll come to Jed and say, as a users group, we'd like to see the following uh, enhancements. And, you know, if, if you're a paying member, you can do that. We listen to our customers. <laughs> wise to run a business like that. So it really is our customer base that's uh, creating this environmental artificial intelligence. So without um, that customer base saying, this is what we want AI to do for us in the future. You know, there's a lot of people using AI for different things, right, in this world. But uh, some people are using it for environmental and trying to make it a better world and trying to improve their companies uh, and reduce uh, the risk associated with that. Them. geospatial view, and he didn't spend a lot of time on that, but that thing is, is well, you, you can, you can really see what somebody could do with that, right? Uh, Google, basically at Google Earth, you can go down to every emissions point for for any facility, any tank, any flare, any any emissions point, and click on it. You'll get your uh, emissions inventory, the trend, the MERT limit, <laughs> the documents associated with that EPN, all with a click. We have a, and thanks for that lead-in, Ralph. So I'm going to show you. Oh, by the way, if you ask Chad GPT, what's the lowest cover circulation rate for GPT 4.0? It's got no clue. It's not we've got no clue. So we have literally the most, the smartest environmental chat bot in the world. And that's because, again, the training that we're doing with the tool. Um, other tools that, that Roe alluded to, and I'm going to get into this main one, and really was some of our, our customers that wanted this experience. They wanted to be able to digitally and virtually be able to manage their facilities and then also access public data about their systems and have that at their fingertips. So that's what we did with My Tundra. And so you can see you just create a favorites list. So our, our customers just create all their facilities on the left or their competitors that they want to follow. And then that becomes their list. And they just essentially keep that up. Essentially, it's a way to manage their, their um, facilities. And then once they click on the facility, they can play at the facility, like we said. Uh, and get additional details. So I'm showing here all the emissions points, for example, with this flare. There's three pilot lights. Uh, flame temperature is 800 degrees. You can see the average flow rate. Um, the emissions details, so we pulled these annual, hourly, permitted, as well as actual from the last emission inventory. What controls are in place? Uh, the permit uh, documents associated with that unit. We pull everything from the internet. So you can just click over and see what the internet is talking about your site. 
uh, chat uh, track bots, which some customers love. Uh, you can type in whatever you want to follow, and within an hour, you'll know. And we send daily email notifications. So if you want to know anytime anyone gets an affirmative defense or a special condition around a stack test, just create a, a track bot, subscribe like that. Suddenly that AI right is every hour it's trying to see if there's a new document that's coming into the agency that's mentioning that that you these buttons, what happens then is that this pops up. And now suddenly you have access to a whole additional set of data. So you can click on, and I'll show you a few examples of this. Well, one example with permits, but you can do corrective actions, look at the environmental sentiment analysis, look at the current air quality conditions around the site. Uh, what's the latest permit notices? Environmental property view, essentially with a, a click of the button, you almost do an automated phase one assessment of your property enforcement actions, social media that's related to your site. So you can personalize this. We wanted that ability to, uh, certain things are important, some things you don't want to see. So the ability to just really quickly add this so you can help manage your facility uh, virtually using that data. We also have pulled in and I'll show you this feature first. So once going down one more layer, if you, if you click on permits, up pops all your permits air, water, waste, all your permits with the agency, as well as where they sit with the agency. So if you're looking at when it's going to be a good opportunity to look at improving my special conditions, well, I can see right here, this is my latest permit. Um, this up for renewal at TCQ. That's updated all in, in real time. I'm told um, one of the tools that we're starting to develop is internal data systems. So to the extent our clients want to pull in additional data capabilities from their internal sources in a secure format, but be able to meld that with the geospatial tools that's happening in the public. So they can start to begin bringing those together in a secure place, but one kind of informs the other. And two, you can start to see where the public might have the wrong understanding, the incorrect data. And so you can see opportunities to go back to the agency or wherever that public information is to correct it. Uh, but air emission systems, so uh, one of our uh, uh, partners in this is IV Control, and one of our customers said, hey, we want 25 air emission sensors, and we want all the data pulled into Tundra. And so we just delivered 25 air sensors. Uh, and so that data will essentially be so they can click, see the emission unit, and then click to those individual units. And then we're, we'll begin to use machine learning to understand dynamically what's happening in the plant and how that relates essentially to the overall uh, environmental management envelope. Yeah. What, what data can be brought in? Is it just any structured data if you're working with a customer you can bring it in? Yes, to, to, to an extent. Okay. So we, we've, we've got the ability to, uh, um, with a click of a button right here, add link. So if you want to add your own link, and it could be an internal or external link, um, you could add that link, and essentially that then um, it's populated into this system. In terms of incorporating that data into this data, um, that is uh, another functionality that certainly we could add. The key is to make sure that we do that in a secure environment, um, and but we can do that and essentially create almost like a digital twin of a facility where we can take your data, bring it offline, or you're taking our data and bringing it offline, playing with it right in a safe environment, and then not returning certain results returning those that make sense to you to help your systems uh, become more intelligent. And I got to say one more. Yeah. I chat GPT, which is kind of a red flag for me personally. So when you use chat GPT through OpenAI, it trains the model. If you use it through Microsoft, you pay for it. It doesn't train the model. It kind of respects your privacy. Right. Um, what, what format do you guys? So we're in the respect of privacy mode. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we've got a lot of sensitive uh, information and it's proprietary. So. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how these systems advance. I think there's there's uh, advantages to bringing in those use cases and that additional data, but we want to make sure that we do it in a safe way. Um, and we'll have a, uh, I think there was one more question. Let me, let me make sure that I get the, the question. We'll open up to questions at the end, but I want to make sure that I have it. Yeah, it, it kind of answered it, but it seems very Texas focused uh -huh. here. You know, so you mentioned you do have other states involved. How, you know, can you explain, you know, to what degree other states are, are impacted and you have a list of those? Yes, we have about 13 states. 
Texas and Louisiana are by far the ones that we have the most data on. Um, some of the other states are not as well developed in terms of their digital resources. I see a lot of head nodding. We know how this works. And so what we'll do is as these other states bring their systems online, uh, then of course we can scrape and access their data. Um, in addition to that, though, what we'll do is get more public information act requests. So if our customer base, which really drives our, our uh, focus, if our customer base is saying, I've got two facilities in Iowa, good, I want to make sure that everything out of Iowa happens um, and we'll make it happen. I use it for EPA. I use it for Louisiana. I use it for Texas. And like I said, he's expanding the states. You saw the tabs up there on the states. I mean, you can click on each one of those and it'll only give you the document from that state or it'll give you documents from all states or it'll give you documents from just EPA. You can just click on those tabs depending on which you're interested in. Um, but it's all, you know, some states are very poor at uploading their data. <laughs> and if you're poor uploading your data or providing access to the data, just don't, you know, not much you can do uh, about helping that state. It's about resources, right? Some states just don't have the resources. Yes. Uh, so we, I guess we, um, I, I have it on this PowerPoint, and so I can make sure that I send you that. And again, if there are other states that you're seeing that you want to add to the system, we'd love to add those. The data that's publicly available, really. It, the, the key point here, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and if it's already it has an electronic means to access it, then we can do it very, very easily. If we don't, then of course we've got to submit a public information act request. And what we can do in, is just send up a, a frequent basis to do that so that we can essentially automate. I'll show you a little bit too much inside baseball. We can automate the public information act request process. Use essentially chatbots to send public information act requests and obtain that information and then load it up. So there's a lot of different ways, right, that you can use automation to, to begin to drive change. So uh, the limit is your creativity. Um, and what we really encourage is, again, as we grow the, and expand this tool, um, it'll be the customer base that really is driving that. The fact is the future is changing. I mean, all of us, it's, it's changing dramatically. And so the opportunity is huge to get in front. Um, if, if you don't, with, with AI, I think we all realize we're just going to get run over. It, it's just a fact. It just is a fact. And so augmenting these beautiful minds that we have ours, uh, of ours with the capabilities of these tools do incredible things for the environment and for our companies in terms of reducing risk, um, improving environmental performance, um, and, and reducing costs of the company, uh, improving their, their financial uh, uh, end game. And less billable hours for Jed. <laughs> That's mobile hours, and, and I'm fine with that. Um, and, and John, John's going to be fine with that as well. So we'll find other things to do. The great, the great thing is that we can provide a lot more, I think, legal capabilities with tools like this. We can use our creativity more, and we can spend our time, right, hopefully more of your time, with being more productive rather than uh, downloading PDFs. Uh, other questions? Let's open it up. And, and other comments too. Ro, do you have any? Other additional comments? No, that, I, think, I think you covered a lot there. I have a question. Um, can it, can one of the sources of data be uh, email databases or email for people that have left the company? And so you kind of bring that historically. I just talked to him about this this morning. We just <laughs> you, had this conversation this morning. You, you, you answer that, right? Yeah, what I, you know, often when I get, I got a question on the Mon Rule last week, I had to go back to, to 1995 to answer that question on the basis of that. And it was because email exchanges internally on a piece of equipment at a site. And so I asked Jed, I said, hey, we got all this information that's sitting in boxes and emails. You know, uh, how, what's the means of, of capturing that? And there is a means of capturing that. Uh, and to, to make it away from the internet realm, I don't want it discoverable, right? I want it only for, for site. And I mean, Jed can take it the next step about how you would do that and cabinet and have access to it only at your you know, company and not accessible uh, anywhere else. The fun thing is that we can personalize a chatbot for you. If you want your own environmental one, but on your own data in your own system. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, a, it's an amazing new world we live in. And so I think the ability of taking internal intelligence and making that intelligence smarter using these systems. I would have I loved to gone on, if, I, if that was available, I would have loved to gone on and said, you know, similar question. Mon rule, right? There's all the hits. Oh, that's too many. And then you 
um, focus your question a little bit more and you get better answers and you focus your question a little bit more, you get better answers, right? And you, you're down to about 15 documents from a thousand internally I'm talking about, right? And boom, you can have that in, you know, 15, 20 minutes as opposed to flipping through boxes and people's uh, people that are not even anymore, their email boxes and things like that. And the neat thing is too, we can bring so much phenomenal work back to life. So one of the last times I saw John Day was at the uh, funeral of one of our friends, Ralph Marquez, who was a commissioner at TCQ. And uh, you know, it's interesting like how many of Ralph's documents are in this system, you know, and how the, the intelligence of people before us, as well as the hundreds of thousands of us that have poured right our lives into these systems and our intelligence and the ability of these tools now to be used by others, right? So that almost us, right, become uh, more useful uh, with these systems to enhance uh, for, for future generations. So uh, there's that element of it as well, what we can do with our combined intelligence uh, as humanity. Jed's got a booth out there. So if, you, if you're working on a permit right now and you're curious about something, go to Jed's booth, type it in, it's, see what you get. It's all right there and have fun with the chat bot and, and you can get crazy and have a little fun with it uh, in terms of being able to ask questions. And questions, again, is really drive value for your company. So I, uh, for example, asked it to write a permit application for me. It did pretty well. Um, I asked it to write a, a, an extension letter for a start of construction for a new source review permit. Yeah, it did pretty well. And we are just kind of at the beginning of its training. So we'll, we should see in the next two to four weeks uh, a whole nother level. And as these large language models, they're only going to get better. It's just a fact. And so as these base models continue to improve and we continue to train it more on our data and use our systems to essentially make it more intelligent, it's just going to get more powerful. That's just the way the, the future will It's work. exciting and scary at the same time, isn't it? Uh, yeah. it's, it's exciting, right? It, it, it's just such an exciting time to be alive that at the end of the day, it needs people to train it. It needs people to prompt it. It needs people to use it to bring out those use cases. Um, right now, artificial intelligence is training on a lot of social media posts, right? Do we really want it training on that or do we want it training on environmental data and about nature and how to protect it? So this is an exciting time, I think, for all of us to start to use AI for good things, which I would call environmental improvement compliance and performance, and making money, making money for all the people in this room and for society. So uh, I really appreciate everyone uh, being here today. Again, please come visit us in the booth and, and thank you.